So on Windows, a lot of PC gamers will use this software, MSI Afterburner, to change their GPU clocks and core clocks and also control fan speeds and temperature limits. A lot of times people also undervolt their GPUs with this. Another good feature of MSI Afterburner is that we have RevaTuner Statistics Server and turning this on, it will give us specific stats on how our PC is performing while gaming. While making a transition over to Linux, this application is not available on there, but I'm going to show you the alternatives to it. The first application we have here is called Linux GPU Control Application. Originally, it was called Linux AMD GPU Control Application, but it does more than just AMD now. It now covers NVIDIA and Intel. This is a really great tool that opens up all the functionality of MSI Afterburner, but on Linux. And this is available on a wide variety of Linux distributions here. As you can see, you can install it on Arch-based systems, Debian Ubuntu derivatives, Fedora, Gentoo, OpenSUSE, NixOS, and it's also available on Flatpak. But it's probably better if you do the native installation of it. And another note here is that the NVIDIA support requires the NVIDIA proprietary driver with CUDA libraries installed. Now, if we click on the hardware support, we actually get to see which GPUs will function well with this application. What you want to do is cross reference this list to see if you're able to monitor and change settings on your GPU with this application. Now, installing this is pretty straightforward. You can see that this is easily found in the Arch repository. And for the Debian Ubuntu derivatives, you'll be able to use a .deb file. It's also available in the copper repository from Fedora in the RPM releases, making it really easy to install on any distro. The next application I'm going to cover here is called Mango Juice. And what this is going to do is help us configure something called Mango HUD. And that's what's going to give us the statistics of our system while we're playing games. Mango Juice comes easy to set up. If we go over to our releases, we'll see that there are some different packages available. A flat pack version of Mango HUD is needed in order to use the flat pack version of Mango Juice. But if you have Mango HUD already installed natively, then we're going to need to install either the RPM. If you're on a Fedora or OpenSUSE based system, we can use the app image on any system or we can use the Debian package on any Debian Ubuntu derivative. We're going to use the app image on this one because this one is also distribution agnostic so we're not going to go into anything too specific we're going to go general on this one okay let's go ahead and get started with installing linux gpu control i'm currently using linux mint and i'm going to go ahead under the installation tab and i'm going to go get the dev file from releases important to note that the pre-release is on top and i'm not going to use that one i'm going to go ahead and use the stable build i'm going to scroll down until you see assets Okay, before we pick any Debian package, since I am on Linux Mint 22.1, that means this is based on Ubuntu 2404. We're gonna pick the right Debian package. That's gonna be this one right here, Ubuntu 2404. I went ahead and saved it to my downloads folder and I'm gonna double click this to install it. Install successful. Close this and launch Lact. Now we need to enter this command to enable it. So we'll open up our terminal. Copy the command and paste it over. Enabled. I will close this. We can explore the application here. So here we have basic information about this graphics card, letting us know that it's a Radeon RX Vega and it has 56 compute units. So this is a Vega 56 card. Let's just know how much VRAM we have and which driver is being used, the AMD GPU. Down here, it also lets us know that we're using the latest version of Mesa from the PPA. If we head over to OC, this is where we could change how our graphics card performs. Now you won't be able to do it unless you hit enable AMD overclocking. I do believe this setting is different for Nvidia and Intel but this is where you'll be able to fine tune your overclock settings. If we head here to show historical charts, it'll let us know performance data over time. We can even export it as a CSV. Here we can change our power limits. Now this card is a 185 watt card. However, I can also get an extra 50% from this by enable AMD overclocking. This is what I would normally get in Windows. Underneath here, we have performance level, and right now it's set to automatic, 
you choose to have the highest clocks, the lowest clocks, or you can manually tune these. I like to keep it at either automatic or highest clocks. Basically the way that would work is it would check against the thermals and give you the highest clock you can while keeping the temperature the lowest it can. This is the same way GPU boost works on Nvidia. For our power states, you can change these if you change the toggle to manual. So this is a way you can undervolt your GPU. So from here you can change it. When you're done making your changes, you can hit apply underneath. For thermals, this is where you could control your fan settings. You can keep this under automatic. You can set a fan curve at specific temperature points. Or you could also give it a static fan speed. The choice is up to how you like to manage your fan speeds. This is just more information about the software. And this about covers most of what you would do with MSI Afterburner. However, I do want to enable AMD overclocking so that we can see what this is like. You sure you want to do this? We'll go ahead and hit yes. Now it's good that this happened here because I can show you what to do if you get this error. What I'll do is close the program. We'll restart the PC. On boot up, we'll go ahead and enter OC again and enable AMD overclocking. Hit OK. And now we're left with the message overclocking is disabled. A system reboot is required to apply the changes. Let's go ahead and do that. Reboot again. Go ahead and open it up again. Head into OC. And now we have extra options available. As you can see now we have clock speeds and voltage. We can tweak these values here to your desire. Still have the power states available as well. So if we head up here, we'll see that we have a default profile, but what we can do is also set up an OC profile. It's gonna copy the values from our default. Now, if you wanted to do an OC undervolt profile, you could go here and add it here. And then from here, you can tweak the settings to your liking. You could also have it automatically switch profiles. When you click on the cogwheel, you can make it run the profile when a specific program is running or if game mode is active. This is a really cool feature. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. Now, once again, just understand that when you overclock your graphics cards, you are doing it at your own risk. I'm merely just showing you how you can do it on Linux. I actually prefer not to overclock my cards. Instead, I would just do a regular undervolt, especially since the AMD cards benefit greatly from undervolting your cards. So that about does it for lacked. Now, if you want to get the stats on your screen while gaming, so you can monitor your system's performance, especially under overclock, then let's head over and get mango juice and head into the releases. Head on down here and get the app image for the x86 64. All right, so now that we have it in our downloads folder, one application that I recommend everyone should have, especially if you're going to download app images on Linux, is to have the Flatpak application called Gear Lever installed, because this is going to help us integrate this into our system. With Gear Lever installed, I'm going to go ahead and right click on this and open with Gear Lever. Go ahead and unlock this. We can move it over to our app menu. I'll also go ahead and launch the application. What we're seeing here is anything that's ticked on is what's gonna show in our stat overlay. So we could test this by going to the test button on top left and we have the VK cube. Any changes made will reflect here as well. So if I turn this on, you see that now we have the model of our GPU displaying here. So turn on and off the things that you'd like. If we head over to the extras menu, we can see that there are other things that we can add as well. If we turn game mode on, this will let us know if game mode is on or off. And as we can see here, game mode is off. So these are other things 
that are not directly tied to our GPU and CPU metrics, but they are other metrics that we can monitor on Mango HUD as well. So there are a wide variety of options here for you to explore, and these are all personal preferences to yourself. Another cool thing we can do with the performance tab is actually use this to limit our frame rate. You show a frame counter. Here you can also force VSync to be on. And another option is to have it set for adaptive refresh rate as well. For the visuals tab, you can basically just change how this appears for you. Experiment with this and see what you like. Also change the colors down here as well. When you're done, you click the hamburger menu and click save or save as. Now there is also another application that can help here as well. This is the alternative to it, which is also another one that I've highlighted in a previous video. This one is Goverlay. So as you can see on Linux, we have many options. From here, we're offered the same amount of customization. And what I would say is that this is all down to your visual preference or workflow preference. Whichever one you feel is more comfortable using should be the one you should use. You can see everything here can be changed the same way. And this one even has presets. Here we have the game running with our overlay up top. See the performance of the game. If you were to make any tweaks on the fly, you'd be able to also see that performance as well. And so this is a great alternative to what we have on Windows with MSI Afterburner. I know it's uh, two applications, but you know, hopefully one day we'll have it all in one. So with that said, I hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you liked it, please give the video a like that so others can find this video as well. Subscribe if you want more informative content like this. Support links will be posted in the description below. I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.